Hi friends. So it is June 2nd and the weather is warming up here in North Carolina and people are outside constantly. And in the last couple of weeks, I've had quite a few patients call because they had ticks on them or they found a tick crawling, but it wasn't yet embedded. So before we get too far into our summer activities, I wanted to pause and remind everyone what is the best thing to do if you find a tick on you? So the first point I want to make is that we don't have enough information if you throw the tick away. So definitely save the tick, place it in a Ziploc bag or a plastic baggie or even a glass jar with a lid. Um, if it is dead, you can, I mean, if it is alive, you can also add some alcohol to the solution and that should kill the tick. Um, you don't have to add preservative or alcohol, however. And then I would recommend that we send the tick in to one of the places that actually test the tick so that that way I know if there are spirochetes on the tick, I know what to look out for in you, the patient. So one of the best places to send the tick is a place called tickreport.com. It is the most affordable, it's 50 bucks. They will identify the tick in terms of which type of tick it is, deer tick, dog tick, dog tick, et cetera. And then they will test the tick accordingly for whatever spirochetes or bacteria that type of tick is known to carry, okay? Um, so that's great, we get the information within three days. So all you have to do is put the tick in a plastic bag, no preservative needed and um, mail it and then pay them. And there's a form that you can print out online if you go to tickreport.com. Now, in addition, there's another lab that tests the tick. There's lots more labs, but one of the ones I like is actually Igenex, I-G-E-N-E-X. And that's just um, igenex.com. And they actually have a lot of information on their website, including a graphic about how to remove the tick using a tweezer. And they explain how to collect the tick and send it to them. Now their test report is a little bit more expensive. You have to choose what you'd like to have the tick tested for. Um, and it's about $65 per disease that you'd like to rule out. So ticks in general can carry Lyme disease, which is Borrelia, Babesia, um, relapsing fever, tick-borne relapsing fever, rickettsiosis, ehrlichiosis, anaplasmosis, tularemia, Powassan, something called Starry, and then um, there's also Heartland virus and Carolina and Colorado tick fever. Now those are not as prevalent here. However, Heartland virus actually is, but obviously not the, the Colorado tick fever is more in the West. So it does matter location-wise where you're bit with the tick, but having said that, Babesiosis and Borrelia um, are very prevalent in this area. So you can choose Igenix and just, you know, select Babesia and um, Borrelia, or you can send it to the tick report, in which case they automatically test it for everything. So the other thing is when you remove the tick correctly using a tweezer and make sure you get the head out, you then can clean the area with some rubbing alcohol. And I also recommend if people have oregano oil that they place some oregano oil on there on the skin to kill any spirochetes that are there. Wash your hands with soap and water because any spirochetes that are there are, are um, attracted to the, the saliva, so the saliva of the tick will, will, will contain spirochetes. So you want to make sure that you wash everything thoroughly. And unfortunately, the amount of time that the tick was in does not directly correlate to how likely you are to get Lyme from the tick. So you can have a tick embedded for only a few minutes, but it can transmit Lyme. So you know, the symptoms to look out for with Lyme or Bartonella or Babesia are a rash. However, 50% of people don't get a rash with a tick bite and they still are transmitted a disease. Also look out for fever, flu-like symptom. So don't just write off any flu-like symptom, especially if you've been in the woods. Some of these ticks are so tiny that you could have one that you didn't notice. So any flu-like symptom, call me and we can talk through what to do. Um, and then, of course, mu muscle aches or myalgias or joint pains, especially migratory joint pain, and then lymph nodes. 
So if you have any swollen lymph nodes, let me know. Again, um, we want to look carefully. Ticks love to go to the warm places anywhere in the scalp behind the ears, armpits, groin, between the toes, behind the knees. So check for ticks after you're in the woods. If you find any, or even in your yard, some people have enough of a, a yard that they may have a problem with ticks. Um, don't let your dog sit on the furniture because even if you treat your dogs with tick prevention, the tick can actually grab onto the hair of the dog and it won't embed itself in the skin due to the tick prevention, but it will drop off on the furniture. So if the dog's been on the couch and then you sit on the couch, you're likely to get a tick that way. And um, let's see, there was one last thing. Oh, if you're going out in the woods and you can actually put on some permethrin coated socks, which you can order on Amazon, or there's a couple different websites that make them. Permethrin coated socks would be great. Pants and then tuck your pants into your socks. And they also make permethrin coated shirts, but to be honest, the lower portion is the most important. So there's plenty of spirochetes to be concerned about in our area of North Carolina. Please protect yourself is the most important. If you do find a tick, don't throw it away, send it in to be tested, and then let me know if you have any symptoms. Thank you, have a wonderful day.